So hey everybody, welcome to Camerville, and uh, today we'll be talking about the Rokina 14mm 2-point aperture lens. So right before we get started with this review, I just wanted you guys to know a few things. First things first, I made a review with the Pentax 1530 versus this lens. If you guys have not watched the video, I'll give you guys a quick summary. Essentially, at the end of the day, this lens and the Pentax 15 and 30 produces the same image quality in terms of sharpness. However, this lens right here, the broken up 14 millimeter, produces a bit warmer tone. The Pentax 15 and 30 produces a cooler tone. So hopefully that will help you guys in a decision and choosing which lens to buy. Number two, if you guys don't know about this lens, basically this lens is actually an astrophotography lens. It's actually really famous in that department. It actually etched out a lot of the high-end Canon glass and Nikon glass in terms of coma. And so when you're shooting the night skies, your stars are a lot crispier from this glass. So that's a good thing about this lens. It's actually affordable, it's actually producing great image quality, and it does shoot excellent astrophotography. In terms of build quality, it comes with a plastic lens hood, SO. And it fits on the lens like this. Unfortunately, the lens comes with a built-on lens hood and so you cannot take it out or anything like that. The ND filter for this particular uh, glass is quite expensive. I'll leave a link below, but as you can see that the lens is protruding out like a fisheye and so uh, I'm, I'm expecting a lot of uh, warping, I think. It looks like a fisheye. Uh, hopefully it doesn't warp that much, maybe just a little bit. The focus ring is pretty nice and smooth. I have no problems with it. Aperture ring is very nice and clicky. This lens do come in two different flavors, one without the chip and one with the chip. Basically, if you get the chip, it'll help you with the auto exposure. It helps you control your um, aperture ring from the camera. And so that's a pretty cool feature to have. If you guys want to save 30 bucks, go ahead. Don't get, the, get, don't get the one with the chip, get one without the chip. But I got one with the chip. And so today we'll be shooting a lot of architecture, hopefully some interiors, some landscape, and definitely a portrait photography to see what this lens could produce. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and let's get going. Woo, it's hot. Woo, it's hot out here. Before we get started with shooting with this lens, I just want to show you guys something really quick. I do this a lot, so hopefully you guys um, probably do this as well. Uh, basically, I get my screen as so when you're doing landscape photography. I set my setting to the dot on top. And basically, I just zoom in. And I just quickly manual focus to the way I want it. And as you can see, the focus picking is coming on. And that's one thing I like about the Pentax K1. It definitely is one of the best landscape shooting camera on the market. And so if you guys are really into just purely landscape, I would suggest you guys switch to Pentax. And to even add more oil to the fire, you could definitely do uh, the pixel shift and basically pixel shift will give me a much more crispier actually much more crispier and cleaner image and so right now I have it on a hot key right here on the side that I labeled on raw and basically right now as you can see that uh, pixel shift is on the icon is right there, the MC icon is right there and so once I get that on, I will focus, manually focus on my subject, which is very nice. And I could take a picture ship image. And so it's taking four images and it's combining them together. So you get a less noisier image and much more sharper image as well. And so that's one cool thing about the Pentax King one that I really like. Oh, maybe I should uh, take a photo somewhere in the shades or something. It's getting ridiculously hot out here. So basically, I'm noticing that at two-point aperture, this lens is producing a slightly softer image compared to the f4 and 5.6. And so with that said, um, I'm not surprised, but it's definitely something for you guys to know. Um, the edges is a little warpy, but um, that's from my first initial check-in on this um, image that I'm taking a photo of. So hopefully I'm wrong, who knows? We'll definitely check on the computer for sure. So taking a look at 2.8 versus f4 center focus, it's it's actually not that bad. It is soft, but it's only a hair soft. And I believe if you 
Jack, your um, sharpening at 5% in Lightroom or in, even in Photoshop, you would probably get the same sharpness as F4. And if you take a look at the edges, it does warp. And so let me quickly uh, change the right side to a F16 so you guys can see the difference. So F16, you can definitely see the warping going on around this area. The structure right here is going diagonally. So definitely there's slight warping. Well, not slight, there's definitely noticeable. So there's warping in this lens. So I'm really amazed at the pixel shift. It actually gives you a much cleaner image as I stated before. It's really crazy how clean it can get. So I'm really glad that I could just set the pixel shift to my hotkey. I just hit it once, I take the shot right away, and it just works just like that. And you can turn off just by hitting the hotkey again. And that's something that uh, I think many camera companies should actually consider about doing. So these two images are the same aperture and the same shot, of course. On the left is 2.8 and on the right is 2.8 at picture shift. And so, as you can tell, it's, it's uh, the difference is really slight. And so, just to give you an idea, the door from here looks a little softer. And right here, it looks a bit sharper at pixel shift. And we can take a quick look on the right. As you can see, it's only a, it's only a hair sharper, and that's the type of quality you'll be getting with pixel shift. And so, the floor is a bit uh, blurry on the left, and it's a little sharper on the right. And so, with that said, uh, a file like this, a regular 36 megapixel file, it's about 44 megabytes. A pixel shift file is about 162. So that gives you an idea on the file size and the image quality that you're getting from pixel shift. And also another thing about the setup is I have focus peaking. So every time when I make a shot, I kind of know that it's really in focus because the focus peaking will allow me to zoom in and magnify and make sure that I am getting a clear shot. It's a little nicer out here. Burn is shooting out there. Woo wee! It's pretty uh pretty cool right now. So we are going to take a picture of the staircase. Now for those people that are interested in architecture, this might be uh, important for you guys to know about. Center focus is actually still sharp, as I stated before. It's not that bad um, at 4, it gets slightly sharper. But if you look on top, you see the chromatic aberration happening. And the good news is, once you stop your aperture up, you lose a lot of the chromatic aberration. And if we can take a look on the left, the warping is not too bad actually. This door is not straight, it's actually leaning towards the right, but that's really fixable in post. And as you can see on the right side of this image, it does warp just a little bit and is also really fixable in Lightroom or Photoshop. And as you jack up the aperture up, you'll notice that the chromatic aberration does disappear. So right now I'm focusing on these trees right here. Now, now for those people that love to shoot at the sun, this is the kind of results you'll be getting. Uh, I don't see any lens flare at 2.0 f4, maybe just a little bit on top, as you can see. But once you jack up the aperture higher, the lens flare starts to get even more bigger, and as you can see, it encompasses a bit more on top. And as soon as I jack the aperture even more higher, you can tell that lens flare is going really radical and that's something for you guys to know about it does lens for just a little bit on the bottom as you can see right there and so that's something you guys should take note of oh man let's get some plants let's see some boca tests so basically what the so basically i'm going to do a quick boca test i'm going to take a picture of the daisy right here and we'll see how is the book quality from this glass So in taking a look at the photos, the center focus at 2.8 versus f4, as I stated before twice already, that uh, 2.8 is actually a hair softer than f4, and so you could definitely just fix it up by sharpening it in Photoshop or Lightroom. The bokeh is a gradual difference. I can't really tell you which one is which if you gave me a test. It does look very similar, but it's really very gradual, as I would say, and so if we jack up the aperture to f8 to 5.6 you can tell that it's also another gradual jump from one another as you can see but definitely it is getting sharper in the background and if I jacked up to f11 to f16 you'll notice that 
these areas do get in focus pretty much and f16 it does get a bit sharper of course and so let me show you guys an extreme difference between both of these images on the right is f16 and on the left is 2.8 Right now I have the camera on the floor. And so basically I'm having the camera shoot me from a worm's eye view. And right now from my phone that I'm taking a photo from, I really have a dynamic uh, look to my legs right now. So for, I don't know, I guess some fashion photographers who definitely want to accentuate the woman's leg, you could definitely get that kind of look you want. Whoa, this is pretty cool. Pretty weird though. I never took a picture of myself in this angle. Um, that's a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I look really, really distorted, that's for sure. Like, everything is out of proportion. Like, if I look like I'm stepping on the camera. So if you guys are, like, trying to be creative and trying to shoot out from the norm of the 50mm, 35, 85, even 100, maybe try a 14. You might get some interesting um, point of view, actually. Wow, I never shot myself with a wide angle lens, so this is my first time doing it. Woo. My legs definitely look a lot longer than my whole body though. That's for sure. Also, I know that this lens actually vignettes just a little bit, but it's easy to remove in light room. And even at 2.8, you could definitely notice that the edges do have slight vignetting. Uh, if you look at f4, the vignette starts to disappear. But if you do want to remove vignetting in 2.8, you could definitely do that in Lightroom. And all you have to do is go lens correction and scroll down to vignetting. And, and there you have it. Most of the vignette is basically gone. And following up with the vignetting, I took this picture of this brick wall and as you can see it does distort and it does have vignette and first I will fix the vignetting by changing the slider and the distortion this is not a perfect fix but it's a starting point for you guys to start with and then you take it to Photoshop and readjust from there and as you can see it's helping me align it closely into the center and so from then on I'll take this to Photoshop and definitely uh, do a bit of manual fixing on the edges So to wrap things up all together I took this picture of this building at f8 and so at f8 you will not be getting chromatic aberration or vignetting and also this is the sharpest you can go on this lens and so let's take a quick look at the image and as you can tell once you go to the edge of this image things are sort of moving to the left and that's something for you guys to take note of. And if you go to the far left, everything is moving to the right, as you can see. And so for all you guys that are shooting architecture, this is the type of image quality you'll be getting from this lens if you are shooting this wide. And in certain cases, if you're shooting straight on your building, um, the warping does not seem to exist. As you can see on the far right, you can barely tell there's any warping going on. And if you look at the far left so it just depends on how you're shooting your buildings and so just keep that in mind so unlike architecture nature photography is a bit better because you can't really tell the distortion in the images and it's a lot easier to fix and so as you can see the distortion is happening right here the leaves are kind of elongated and moving to the far left this does the same thing as well and so all you have to do is play with this distortion slider right here in Lightroom and then you would just crop it and before you know it everything is kind of in perspective correctly and so with that said I think nature photography is not a big deal with this lens so after taking this glass for a spin, I noticed a few things that I did not notice before because I use this glass strictly for astrophotography. Number one, at 2.8 aperture, this lens is actually pretty, slightly hair soft. It's not a big deal. You just jack it up to f4 at 5.6, 
your image will get much sharper. Number two, chromatic aberration. It's not that bad, but it's there. It's very slight thin blue. When you jack up your aperture to get a sharper image, you definitely will lose a lot of that CA. So that's a good thing. Number three, the ND filter. Essentially, the ND filter is really overpriced. It's really expensive. It's an arm and a leg. So if you're really interested in doing pure landscape photography with this glass, an ND filter will definitely break your wallet. <laughs> Number four, the warping. The warping on the edges is okay. You could definitely fix it in post and Lightroom. There's a warping section, uh, lens correction, of course. However, some of it needs to be really manually fixed in Photoshop. So it will take a bit much time if you're shooting a lot of architecture buildings that are going perpendicular up in the, in the air. It's definitely going to warp to the side or the edges. And so you'll definitely do a lot of uh, post-processing in your images. It's not that bad. It's actually relatively uh, common to do that when you're doing architecture photography. All in all, center focus is pretty nice. The bokeh is really nice. If you're doing like merchandising photography or something, you'll definitely get a lot of uh, interesting output with this lens. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time reviewing this lens. I did not know a few things prior to doing this review. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and a thumbs down if you hate it. I guess I'll check you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy. Peace.